What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be counting down the top 10 cards from the newest Pokemon trading card game set, Sword and Shield, in stores February 7th. There are a ton of amazing new cards in this set, supporter cards, item cards, and, of course, powerful new Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max making their debut in this Sword and Shield base set. This set is sure to have a heavy impact on the metagame. I can't wait to see what creative combinations players come up with from this new set of cards. Let's get started with number 10. Coming in at number 10 is a Rangaroo. It's got an awesome ability, Primate Wisdom, which allows you to switch a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. This is great not only for seeing more cards throughout the course of your turn, but also for preserving resources during a discard draw effect. We've got Data Change and now Professor's Research, both powerful discard draw effects in standard. Primate Wisdom can help preserve those resources like Welder, Rare Candy, Energy Switch, throw them onto the top of your deck, and then you can draw into them with the effects of Data Change or Professor's Research, and maybe find those completed combos on the other side of your draw. I expect a Rangaroo to be very popular as a bench sitter, it's easy to search out now with Quick Ball entering standard format as well. This thing should see a lot of play. We've got Frostmoth here at number nine with its Ice Dance ability, allowing you to accelerate as many water energies from your hand to your bench water type Pokemon as you like during your turn. Reminds me of Blastoise from Boundaries Crossed, but just a little bit worse. Can only go to bench Pokemon, it can only go to water types. That being said, all is forgiven. Frostmoth is a stage one, meaning it is super easy to get into play. No rare candies required. And because it's so easy to get into play, you could just have some very explosive turns very early on with Frostmoth and then a ton of water just getting rained into play as early as the second turn of the game. There are some powerful new partners for this Frostmoth as well. Lapras VMAX and Caldeo V, both out of Sword and Shield, capable of hitting huge one-hit KO numbers with their attacks, so long as they have a lot of water energy in play, which, of course, the Moth provides. Then there are some old favorites as well, like Palkia GX and Magikarp and Waylord Tag Team GX, both with their powerful GX attacks to complement this new water type deck here out of Sword and Shield. I'm really excited to see what this deck can do in a tournament setting, so we'll have to wait and see. But my bets are on the Moth. This thing is awesome, and if nothing else, a ton of fun to play. At number eight, we have got Sensino with its Make Do ability, allows you to discard a card from your hand in order to draw two cards from your deck. If that sounds familiar, it's because it is. Zorak GX ruled the world with its trade ability in the years that it was legal, very similar to Make Do. Now, there are some stark differences, whereas Zorak GX was usually the complete strategy. It was the attacker and the support all in one. Sensino is the support, but not really the attacker. It does 40 damage, energy assist for one colorless energy, and accelerates some energy from the discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. A nice little attack in a pinch, but not going to be the backbone of any sort of game-winning strategy by itself. Sensino is definitely going to be a great support Pokemon, though, and is one of the best draw cards printed in a non-GX Stage 1 that we have ever seen. So very exciting there, and it is going to form the backbone of a lot of control decks. Now we see control decks love drawing cards, and Sensino does just that in expanded format. Sensino works through Power Plant, which is great, has a little bit more hit points than Pidgeotto, which is also great, really churns through the deck compatible with the execute that propagates as well so really cool pair up there in standard formats there are the Pidgey control decks and Sensino control decks are going to be right there next to it Sensino gets to the bottom of the deck quicker than a Pidgey control deck but Sensino does have to discard a card every turn which can be a little bit of a hang up in standard since you don't have that propagate execute like you do in expanded I still think that Sensino is going to be an amazing card though which is why it is number eight on our top Top 10 list of Sword and Shield cards. At number 7, we have got Aurora Energy. It's like a rainbow energy, but instead of placing a damage counter when you attach it to a Pokemon, you have to discard a card from your hand, which isn't even always a bad thing. Some decks really like to get things into the discard pile, like Malamar decks love to discard Psychic Energy. The new Zacian V decks love to discard Metal Energy for Metal Saucer. There are plenty of reasons why you'd want to discard cards. Mewtwo decks love to discard Pokemon so that Mewtwo and Mew can copy them with the perfection ability. Aurora Energy is a very good card because the discard effect can be seen as a positive for so many decks, whereas the damage placing effect of Rainbow Energy is usually seen as a negative, unless, of course, you're like 
a Spear Tomb deck or something like that. Aurora Energy is going to see a lot of play with Mewtwo and Mew. It's going to see a lot of play in Malamar decks. It's going to see a lot of play in Zacian ADP decks. There are just so many useful scenarios for a card like Aurora Energy, and the more creativity that a card lends to deck building, the more I am behind it. So I love Aurora Energy and the fact that it really flexes up the energy typing that you could use in a deck without placing damage counters. So a very cool card. It's going to see a ton of play. Definitely a good friend of Arceus Dagopalkia because it can be searched with Guzma and Hala, a card that is used often to help get the turn two altered creation GX. Aurora Energy, expect to see big things from it in the upcoming standard format. Number six is Ordinary Rod, which is ironic because there's nothing ordinary about this card. You get to choose one or both of the following. Shuffle up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck, or shuffle up to two basic energy from your discard pile into your deck. And the power of this card is in the selection. You can just pick one basic energy from your discard pile and put it into your deck. You could choose just one Pokemon from your discard pile and put it into your deck. You don't have to dilute the deck with cards you don't want to draw into, which is what makes this card so good. Unlike Super Rod, which if there were three in the discard pile, they're all going back into the deck. The Ordinary Rod, very powerful recovery card, especially with all of the new discard draw effects coming out in standard format. Of course, data changed, but now we also have Professor's Research. Players are going to want to recover cards even more than ever in standard with Professor's Research. Being the new normal in many decks, this card is going to see a ton of play for years to come. Coming in at number five is Metal Saucer. It allows you to attach a metal energy from your discard pile to one of your benched metal type Pokemon. We've seen cards like this before. There's Dark Patch, which is like a 10 to 20 dollar card in expanded format right now and aqua patch aqua patch didn't really ever see a lot of play it did see some in some water box type decks while it was legal dark patch is obviously insane in expanded format because of all the dark support that it comes with now metal saucer is really only going to be as good as the metal type pokemon that it can accelerate energy onto and thankfully there is the new zashin v out of sword and shield which is poised to be one of the most powerful new cards printed from this set. It's already seen stellar results in Japan, and it's all thanks to Metal Saucer helping to pump out quick and efficient attacks. This card is going to be a staple in almost every Zacian deck. That's enough said. There are two very good new supporters out of Sword and Shield. Both are hollow rares, and number four, we have got one of them. Marnie is gaining a ton of hype. It's a new style supporter where both players shuffle their hands and put them onto the bottom of their decks. And then the player who played Marnie draws five off the top. The opponent draws four. So it's very disruptive. Limiting your opponent to a four card hand is extremely good, especially if you're going second and it's your first turn of the game. Your opponent couldn't play a supporter because of the new turn one supporter rules and you Marnie them immediately, sending their hand to the bottom of the deck and limiting to them to just four cards. It can be very good for that. It's also great for drawing cards yourself. You can play your whole hand down, send maybe a couple key cards that you want to save for later onto the bottom of the deck and see five new cards off the top. So a great new supporter card is going to see a lot of play. And it's like Judge. I mean, some decks were playing for Judge. Those decks now are going to play for Marnie. It could be good in just about anything. If you build the deck to be able to draw around the Marnie engine, you've got a very sustainable, very consistent and disruptive draw engine on your hands with Marnie. And I think this card is going to be very hot in the months to come. On to the final three. And in third place, we have got the first V card on the list, Zashin V. And look at that beautiful gold artwork. I mean, this is phenomenal. The artwork on this card is just absolutely next level. If you haven't seen one of these gold cards, oh my gosh, the glitter, the gold bordering. I mean, everything about it is just absolutely magnificent. Zashin V is just one of the best Pokemon cards ever printed. It's got 220 hit points. It's only worth two prizes, and it's a basic Pokemon. 
This thing rocks. Intrepid Sword is an ability that allows you to end your turn by drawing three cards, and if there's any metal energy there, you can attach them to the Zashin V. It's great not only for turn ones, where if you're going first, you can't play any supporter cards, you can't really attack, so great to just end your turn by using Intrepid Sword. It's good in the middle of the game as well. Just when you're trying to power up more Zashin Vs, you could just end the turn with the Jirachi in the active and have the Zashin safe on the bench, just powering themselves up with the ability not only that just drawing cards i mean what a phenomenal energy acceleration ability it draws cards in of itself the draw effect is so good that zasha v could be played in decks just to draw cards just to end the turn by drawing cards think about tropical beach it's a stadium card that's hundreds of dollars now in expanded format because it's a world's exclusive promo but players end their turn by filling their hand to seven in a lot of ways zashin v is a little bit short of that but not by much it's a powerful way to end your turn just by drawing three cards even if you've got no metal energy in the deck that could be a valid way for decks to set up i mean we haven't even talked about the attack yet brave blade three metal energies 230 damage and the drawback is during your next turn this pokemon cannot attack fortunately there's like a million ways to switch this thing to the bench and reset the effect of brave blade you can play switch you can play mallow and lana enough said this is going to get paired with jirachi so you're going to have a great pivot in jirachi as well to give you a free retreater and then back into brave blade you go it pairs perfectly with metal frying pan which can increase the bulkiness of the zashin v and turn its fire weakness off because there are a lot of fire pokemon running around in standard format right now so turning off that fire weakness is great and giving the zashin an effective 250 hp is just insanity on a two prize pokemon there are tag teams with about this much hit points 240 the megalopunny and jigglypuff picaram uh you know and then when you put the frying pan on this thing it's basically in the leagues of tag team pokemon but only worth two prizes it's got the metal saucer to help charge it up and a perfect partner in rcs dialga and palkia when you use adp you can boost the damage output of brave blade from 230 to 260 which means that you can one hit ko picaroms even with the metal resistance you can pair this thing with shrine of punishment to help bring those 270 280 hit point pokemon into the realm of knockout territory you could also pair it with the new fine band is it fine band it's vitality band you can pair it with vitality band which can increase your numbers after an rcs dagapalkia alter creation gx to 270 which is enough to ko a lot of tag team pokemon in just one hit and take bonus prizes this is going to be the hot deck of the spring we're gonna see zashins everywhere are you ready only two cards left in second place, we have got Professor's Research. Discard your hand, draw seven cards, the most powerful supporter effect ever printed in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. And it's back, baby. This is going to make decks way more consistent. We're going to see this card in almost everything. Discarding cards is good. There are so many decks that want to see cards in the discard pile. Talk about Malamar decks, Zashin decks for the Metal Saucer. Talk about Picaram decks getting lightning energy into the discard pile for Tapu Koko Prism Star. Mewtwo decks for getting Pokemon into the discard pile. And not only that, seeing seven new cards. I mean, what deck doesn't want to see seven new cards? Decks are going to have to be built to take the professor's research engine into consideration. I mean, it's not a question of will I choose to discard cards, it's when will cards get discarded. We've got professor's research and Dedene GX, so decks are gonna have to be constructed in a way that they can either recover the resources that they need or burn the resources that they have before they use professor's research in order to function at their peak because discard draw seven is just such an insanely powerful draw ability dating all the way back to base set professor oak then we saw professor juniper professor sycamore and now professor magnolia what a phenomenal card it's gonna see play in almost everything easy to see why it's number two on our top 10 list and of course we save the best for last the number one card out of sword and shield is quick ball discard one card from your hand and get whatever basic pokemon you want from your deck put it into your hand and shuffle your deck afterwards busted card this is everything the standard format needed as far as consistency goes setup decks are going to love this card big gx decks are going to love this card tag team decks v deck doesn't matter whatever deck you are you're probably going to love 
quick ball being in the deck because of the consistency that it offers. Not only can it get your basic Pokemon, it gets you to Dene GX. It turns itself into a draw card, which is even more valuable now that you can't play a supporter turn one going first. Quick ball is a live card turn one going first. You can go get yourself Jirachi, switch into Jirachi Stellar Wish on turn one going first. You can go get yourself to Dene GX and Dene Change turn one going first. Quick ball is a live card and a card that many decks are going to want to see in their opening hand. You're going to see many decks opting to play a complete four of of this card. It's just that good and it's going to fundamentally change the way that decks are constructed from this moment going forward, at least in standard format, and it will definitely see play in expanded format as well. And that's it for our top 10 list from Sword and Shield. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, and ring that bell. And of course, check out FullGripGames.com where we have Sword and Shield pre-orders up now. You can make sure to guarantee your singles sent to your door as soon as humanly possible by pre-ordering with Full Grip Games. Also, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com where we have pre-orders for Sword and Shield PTCGO codes, which will be delivered to you before the set drops on PTCGO this upcoming week. So, have a great day, and thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the top 10 and any cards that you think should have been featured on the list. I'll catch you later on Twitch and, of course, back here on YouTube in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.